Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. If you are eligible for MIPS reporting in 2018, up to 5% of your Medicare payments are at risk. Reporting is a necessity to manage your bottom line, but did you know that you could potentially also earn an upward payment adjustment? You need strategies to simplify data reporting to make the most of your reimbursements, and then get back to focusing your energy where it belongs, on your patients. MIPS Wizard is an easy-to-use online tool that helps MIPS-eligible clinicians quickly and easily complete MIPS reporting. Powered by the Premier Registry, a CMS-qualified registry, MIPS Wizard is the current number one registry for quality reporting to CMS, helping thousands of clinicians successfully report since 2008. Welcome to our MIPS Wizard webcast series, which is a session on 2018 reporting. If you have questions about MIPS Wizard or have questions during our presentation today, please enter them into the questions section of your webcast menu and we'll address them at the conclusion of today's presentation. Today we're going to share with you an overview of current MIPS programs and the requirements for eligible clinicians and practices, as well as information on scoring and bonus point opportunities. Today's overview will also include a review of the MIPS Wizard Registry and information on how to get started with your MIPS reporting. Um, whether you need to report for 2018 or you're getting started for 2019, uh, we welcome your questions about MIPS Wizard and are excited to show you an overview today. We are going to start today with a 2018 MIPS overview. As many of you know, the MIPS program emerged from the MACRA legislation in 2016. Commonly referred to as the Quality Payment Program, the, the larger program, there's two tracks for reporting if you're an eligible clinician. There's the Merit-Based Incentive Payment System, or MIPS, or Advanced Alternative Payment Models, or APMs. MIPS is the track of the program that the MIPS Wizard supports, and the program aligns the historical programming of PQRS and the Electronic Health Record Incentive Program, or Meaningful Use, along with the categories for improvement activities and the current additional category of cost. To determine eligibility, a clinician would fall into one of the category of physicians, including doctors of medicine, doctors of osteopathy, osteopathic practitioners, doctors of dental surgery, of dental medicine, of podiatric medicine, of optometry, and chiropractors as well as physician assistants, nurse practitioners, clinical nurse specialists, certified registered nurse anesthetists, and groups or virtual groups that include one or more of the clinician types in the eligibility list. For 2018 reporting, these clinicians would also need to bill at least $90,000 in Medicare Part B charges and provide care to at least 200 Medicare, Medicare Part B patients per year. Remember, what we have listed today is the 2018 requirements for eligibility, although uh, these requirements did adjust for 2019 reporting. You can get started with either 2018 or 2019 reporting using MIPS Wizard. The MIPS program has three active categories for the 2018 program year, quality, promoting interoperability, and improvement activities. The MIPS quality category is reweighted to 50% in year two, 2018, which is lower from the 60% weight in the first year of the program, and is calculated in 2018 with 12 months of data, which does differ from that first year of MIPS. Promoting interoperability replaces the advancing care information category from the first year of the MIPS program. This category is most closely in replacement of meaningful use for MIPS-eligible clinicians and involves attestation to at least 90 days for the 2018 program year. Improvement activities was a new category in the first year of MIPS and remains in the program uh, throughout the second and third year of the MIPS program, again, including activity attestations for at least 90 days of the reporting period, which is the calendar year. And remember, the cost category was finalized for 2018 as 10% of the MIPS final score weight and will grow in weight in future program periods. 
The measures within the cost category are calculated by CMS for applicable individuals and groups using administrative claims data if they meet the case minimum of attributed patients for a measure and if the benchmark for that measure has been calculated. There's also bonus point opportunities for eligible clinicians and groups through the second program year of the MIPS program, 2018. Many options to attest to applicable bonus opportunities are through the MIPS Wizard Registry, and some bonus point opportunities can be achieved through the reporting completed within the quality category using your MIPS Wizard patient registry and quality submission component. The timeline for data collection spans the entire year of 2018. Although registry reporting allows for anyone to get started anytime, even now, you can register for MIPS Wizard and gain the ability to enter review and see feedback on data from any point in the year. You'll have until our posted deadline of March 31st in 2019 to enter your data from the 2018 calendar year and submit to CMS with plenty of time before the deadline. MIPS Wizard is a qualified registry for 2018 reporting and can calculate and submit quality measures as well as submit attestations for promoting interoperability and improvement activity categories for 2018's reporting period. The Premier Clinician Performance Registry is Premier's enterprise reporting solution and collects and submits MIPS data using data sources rather than data loaded into a registry like the MIPS Wizard by a user and is considered in 2018 a qualified clinical data registry associated with bonus points um, and other opportunities just like the MIPS wizard. Although both of these solutions are designed to assist cl clinicians and practices to comply with the MIPS program at the individual or group level, one major difference between the two products is the data entry option capabilities. MIPS Wizard, a self-service product, intakes data by our users uh, via questionnaires or file uploads like we'll display in a few slides ahead and is designed to be used by individual clinicians or group organizations. Um, and that self-service reporting is different than the enterprise reporting as the, the data feed option, more of an integrated option is available. For those interested in self-service data entry, uh, please do proceed with registration for the MIPS Wizard product. Um, if you do have interest in the automated electronic source integration, uh, you can certainly contact us through our Q&A session or reach out to us through our support line uh, that we'll have displayed later in the presentation for more information about enterprise level reporting. MIPS Wizard is Premier's qualified registry and again is the current number one submission engine for individual provider quality measures reporting. We're going to start our overview of the MIPS Wizard registry. Um, we're going to show you how the product provides several features that help eligible clinicians and groups to successfully and quickly satisfy reporting needs, including easy to follow step-by-step -step reporting prompts and real-time feedback and calculations. Of course, more information, including uh, past presentations and detailed information about our reporting features, is all available at MIPSWizard.com. So how does MIPSWizard work? MIPSWizard can help individual clinicians and group practices report on any MIPS quality measure and attest to any registry applicable measure, objective, or activity within that PI and IA category in addition to quality for the MIPS program. The steps for reporting are simple. After a category is selected, the user has the ability to self-select their measures, load data into the product, and submit any time before the reporting deadline, again, March 31st of 2019. Please note that the program year does follow the calendar year, but data entry and submission can occur between January and the end of March. Reporting begins with the registration for a particular product through our MIPS Wizard products page. Here on the home page, when you review the product catalog, clinicians and practices can review information about the different reporting products available as well as our flexible options for payment. 
Individuals and groups can now register for all MIPS program categories as well as obtain volume discounts for 10 or more clinicians. Once you visit the website at MIPSWizard.com, you can review all of the product options through our product grid on the home page. Here you can review information for individual clinician reporting, you can review information for group practice reporting, or you can request a group payment, which can include, again, volume discounts if you register for more than 10 uh, at a time. If you'd like to review the measures and the activities available in the registry, that information is also all detailed right inside our MIPSWizard.com website. The MIPS Wizard dashboard is available to individuals and groups uh, using the MIPS Wizard product depending on their reporting election at the TIN level. If you're reporting as an individual, you'll see just your information here. And if we're reporting as a group, the information for the entire group would be aggregated up to the top level at the tax ID level, and you'd see uh, aggregate reporting in each category. The tiles in the center of the dashboard, regardless of if you are a group or an individual, correlate to our left-hand navigation, all related uh, to the category or the measures selected by that uh, reporting level, either group or individual. The patient registry, which you see with the call out of the number one, is where all measures are selected, where all of the data entry at the patient and encounter level is completed, and where you're going to be able to see performance reviewed on the measures and the data provided into the registry. The second tile here is the quality reporting tile. That's where you will take any data uh, from the patient registry tile and select it for submission for MIPS reporting. So in the patient registry tile, you collect all of your data and you select your measures. And then in the quality tile, you'll actually choose the data and the measures that you had previously completed in the patient registry and submit them onto CMS. Here, the third tile that we're showing is the promoting interoperability tile, where those PI measures are selected. You can apply post-calculated data from your EHR associated with certain measures and complete your attestations. Um, once again, all able to be submitted right through the MIPS Wizard UI. Now, the improvement activities tile is the last call out that we have on the page where you can take applicable improvement activities for your 2018 reporting period and select them for attestation. Again, you can select these attestations and submit them right through the MIPS Wizard registry. You don't need to do all of your attestation and reporting at once. You can go in and out of these tiles as you need to uh, during your time while you're collecting information and submitting it through the MIPS Wizard. Now, let's talk a little bit about data acquisition and data entry options. Data can be loaded into the patient registry using Excel-based templates, or manual entry self-service tools are available uh, using some online questionnaire forms. Users are not limited to just one method of data entry and can utilize all of our data entry tools throughout the use of the time in the registry. So if you are in your patient registry and you've selected your measures, you can get data into the system by either using our upload tools or our questionnaire-like forms or a combination of both. And if you would ever need assistance with your data entry portion of registry use, we always have a support team available to help. And we'll be giving you information about how to contact the support team at the conclusion of our slides. Okay, so in order to upload data into the patient registry, clinicians or practices would first download their patient and encounter templates alongside a definition file that we provide to all of our accounts. Then you can populate with patient data those templates that are provided to you. Oftentimes, these files are populated, perhaps using reports generated out of an electronic system, and sometimes a clinician or group might even enter information into these templates uh, using a, a hybrid of the approaches. Once the templates are populated, the patient and encounter files are uploaded into our registry, and then as that data uploads into the registry, you as a user account can view the progress in our queue and are always able to access your historical upload information or any reporting that is received through that upload process of the patient registry tile. 
Now, if the practice or a clinician reporter would elect to use our self-service manual data entry process, they're presented with a short set of steps to load data into the registry using online questionnaires. First, you'll complete some patient-level information uh, through data collection forms, and then a few details from your encounter date are collected. We present you with quality action questions to be answered right within the registry tool, and that will complete the data entry into the patient registry uh, while you complete all of the fields that are presented to you associated with your applicable measures uh, for your patient list. You can review performance results at any point after data is loaded into the registry. From the results page, you can view your total population per measure, as well as your denominator eligible population, those encounters that met a measure versus those that did not meet a measure, and the performance ratings according to the data that's loaded into the registry for the measures you select. In addition to viewing your performance rate, you can also see where your measure performance sits against the most recently published CMS benchmarking where available per measure. So you can see all of that information right within the patient registry tile of the tool. Now, flexible category reporting and submission options are available throughout the reporting period. Again, you can go in and out of your uh, MIPS Wizard account and submit data as it is uh, complete within your use of the registry product. You can obviously work within the registry at your own pace. But once your categories are all finalized and submitted through the MIPS Wizard registry, no additional action is needed to be taken by the practice to submit. Uh, once their data is submitted through the registry to CMS uh, during that time frame, which is currently open now. Uh, so right now, uh, participants are able to submit their data for any of the MIPS categories for 2018, or uh, you can still get started and complete your registry reporting and submit it before the deadline, uh, which is at the very end of this month. So you can access um, the information that we reviewed today, uh, and you can also um, see more information within the tabs of the MIPS Wizard website at MIPSWizard.com to review the steps for reporting, um, as well as get started or complete your reporting um, wherever you are on the, the process of completing your 2018 MIPS report. Registration fees, again, are annual and include the submission of reporting to CMS. Volume discounts, again, also apply for groups of 10 or more. Um, those groups of 10 or more registering for MIPS Wizard receive a 10% off registration at the time of their new registration. And again, uh, visit MIPSWizard.com for any archived materials, quick resources that are available around the MIPS program and MIPS Wizard. And remember that it's not too late to start or complete your 2018 reporting. We are offering a special discount for our webcast participants today. So if you register today with the code WEB1123, you'll get a special discount uh, for joining us in the webcast today. Although MIPS Wizard is a self-service product, again, there's plenty of assistance and resources available to you. Resources are added to the MIPS Wizard website, the resources page, continuously through our reporting period um, on all of the applicable reporting years. So check our website, MIPSWizard.com, often for new information. Uh, where registered practices can also receive notifications when materials are added. So if you are not yet registered, uh, you can get started and you can access your patient registry, all of the resources, and begin to get those mailings about MIPS Wizard reporting in the current MIPS period. Our team of product specialists are available through our support desk if you need help. Not only will you find archived presentations and programs on our resources page at MIPSWizard.com, but you can also get those downloadable resources and accesses to guides and instructions when you register for MIPS Wizard. On the resources page, you'll find our team's contact information. You'll also see it on the screen here. So you can certainly uh, contact us by phone or email for assistance with getting started or completing your MIPS reporting.
So we do have several minutes available here at the conclusion of our presentation for a Q&A. So I'm going to go ahead and check the queue of questions to see if we have any questions uh, from today's presentation. So we do have some questions about scoring. And so scoring is going to be specific uh, to the applicable information that you would report from your practice. And um, for those folks who did enter questions about scoring in our queue this afternoon, we will make sure that uh, a specialist does get back with you personally so that we can talk through with you uh, the different scenarios for MIPS scoring and um, talk to you about your reporting goals for the year. We do have questions about the ability to get started with 2018 or 2019. You can enter data regardless of reporting year um, at this current time. Although if you want to submit for 2018 reporting, uh, you would want to get started as soon as possible so that you could submit before the deadline. Oh, and a very good question here. We see um, only entering data for Medicare patients or all patients. So uh, thank you for asking that question. It's a good question. Uh, you are no longer for MIPS reporting just entering Medicare patients. You do want to uh, report the data into the registry on the applicable patients regardless of payer for the measures you choose. And then again, uh, the MIPS wizard will provide you with guidance on uh, the thresholds for uh, data completeness for the measures that you choose. Um, again, 12 months of data are anticipated uh, for submission of reporting for the quality category and 90 days for attestations in the promoting interoperability and improvement activities. You can also see all of the notes on this information on MIPSWizard.com um, as well as within the application itself. We do have a couple uh, questions in the queue for direct contact uh, to be sent out by our team. And of course, uh, thank you for, for sending these notes in and we'll certainly have contact uh, sent out to you uh, through one of our uh, MIPS Wizard team members. And then again, um, specific questions associated with your reporting or your specific practice, don't hesitate to reach out to our team. Um, the MIPS Wizard support team is available business hours by phone. And then also you can certainly always contact us using the email address provided here on this slide. I, I jump back to our support desk contact information slide. It does look like our queue is slowing down. Um, so if you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to go ahead and enter those in now. Or if questions uh, come to you later on after our presentation has concluded, do not hesitate to reach out to us with those questions. Uh, we certainly have a team of folks who are available to help you on our MIPS Wizard team. Also, uh, the special webcast discount, remember, is WEB1123. So those who get started today at MipsWizard.com uh, will get that special discount if you enter the WEB1123 code at the checkout. Okay, so all of the folks that we have in the queue um, that either have questions related to their specific scores or their specific practices, uh, we will be in touch with you using um, a member of our team, whether that be by phone or email. Um, so we will um, be able to uh, check in with you offline. Um, an overview of all of the regulatory components of the MIPS program is available on the MIPSWizard.com website as well in follow-up to some of the questions that we heard in our Q&A today. 
And we also have a 2019 Getting Started presentation available on our resources page. Uh, so you can go ahead and view that archived presentation um, for those of you who have questions about both 2018 and 2019. We'll also be continuing our MIPS Wizard webcast series throughout the 2019 reporting period. So do check your emails as we will send out invitations to additional MIPS Wizard webcasts as they come up throughout the year. Well, I think that this concludes our presentation for today. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, and um, we can't wait to hear from you if you reach out to us by phone or email with more questions or interest in getting started with the MIPS Wizard, and we'll be getting back to you with support answers if you do have those as well. So this does conclude today's presentation. Thank you so much for joining us. You may now disconnect.